Hi, my name is Yudo. I am a solutions architect here at Amazon Web Services with an area of depth in machine learning. And we are so glad to have you joining us today for the AWS Summit Online. In this particular session, Machine Learning at C, we have podcast joining us to share how they use machine learning to improve container shipping. Ling Xiao, the co-founder and CTO of Podcast, and Gassen, the data scientist, will share how they use Amazon SageMaker to run machine learning in AWS. In this session, we expect to learn about the art of predicting arrival time in container shipping. We also hope to learn from podcasts on how their machine learning journey is going, continued with a demo on how they train and serve machine learning models in Amazon SageMaker. Believe it or not, they have managed to deploy multiple machine learning models into one SageMaker endpoint, which can potentially reduce cost. Finally, let's also take a look at other things we can do with Amazon SageMaker. Firstly, about podcasts. When it comes to sending freight across the ocean, there are a lot of moving pieces and uncertainties. Weather, port schedules, and other factors can all have effect to the actual time of arrival. Podcast helps freight companies to save significant logistic costs by predicting cargo estimated time of arrival accurately. Not only that, cargo companies can also utilize podcast to perform data-driven demand planning to improve capacity utilization, optimize empty assets, and scale dynamic pricing. Here, I would like to hand over to Ling Xiao from Podcast to dive deeper on the business problem that it solves. Thank you, Yudu, for the introductions. It is my honor to be able to share our experience with a wide audience. I'll first give a brief background of the driven factors behind podcast, and then go into a bit more details on our journey specifically related to doing machine learning on AWS. So why is having accurate arrival time predictions a problem worth solving? It comes down to the impact. 90% of global trade volume goes through C. Yet the existing process for prediction is very rudimentary and largely dependent on vessel schedule and carrier updates. On average, a container takes 20 to 45 days to go from its origin port to destination port, and they routinely get delayed for days with respect to the schedule. With competitors like Amazon providing superb logistics services and the whole economy going through the digitization transformation, Consumers are constantly expecting better and better services from more traditional service providers as well. But it goes beyond customer satisfaction. Knowing the accurate arrival time in advance gives service providers time to plan the rest of the supply chain efficiently and reduces the overall cost per container. The good news is this is achievable with a vast amount of external data available nowadays at port cost. We divided the data we use into three categories, real-time, historical patterns, and metadata. Real-time data includes vessel location, real-time vessel schedule, weather conditions, port conditions, economic indices, etc. Historical patterns include holiday impacts, seasonalities, real routes that vessels take to go from one port to another. Metadata would include metadata related to ships, like the tonnage and size, engine specs, and port capacity and turnaround times. With all of that data, podcast is able to save the cost of containers by 20% on average, and shippers do not need to handle as much manual follow-ups with the carriers as before. Here is an example. On the left, we could see that Kyoto Express is on its way from Bushan to Kaohsiung, but the cyclone is approaching the traditional optimum route. Podcast machine learning models was able to pick up this and as a result, accurately predicted that the vessel was going to be two days late, even though the carrier schedule still claimed that the vessel was going to arrive on time. So how did we do machine learning part? Well, it was a learning process for us as well. We started out from self-hosted EC2 clusters, where we trained our models inside EC2 instances and generated the predictions in the same instances as well. This actually created a lot of waste in terms of the resources, both because we had resources left idle, but also because we did not utilize the active resources efficiently. For example, we run the prediction process in batch jobs and in parallel processes to prevent each process 
having to load the models again and again. They have preloaded models in memory even if the process is currently gathering the data or performing data engineering. What this means was that for each of the processes, there would be a high memory requirement even though the models were only used in the last step of the process. Eventually, we switched away from this and started using SageMaker for our training jobs. It provides an abstraction so that we do not have to worry about orchestrating the underlying EC2 resources. To get vessel arrival predictions, we train a set of additive models on SageMaker. Container vessels travel like buses, so the final destination of interest might not be the immediate next port. We have to train different models to predict each step of the way, like how long the vessel is going to take to arrive at the next port and how long it's going to stay at the next port before setting off again. These models need to be invoked in sequence to generate the final ETA at the destination port. Because of this, we chose SageMaker Multimodel Server to host our models. Normally, SageMaker creates a separate endpoint for every model that you train. This is beneficial if each of the endpoints have to scale separately because they have different popularities. In our case, the models have to be invoked in sequence, and they will all be invoked at similar frequencies, so it made sense for us to use the multi-model server to reduce cost. Also, because the model is being separated away from the main prediction process, the prediction process does not need to load models into memory, so a lot more prediction batch jobs are able to run at the same time without breaking the memory limit. Next, Gusson will show you an actual demo of how we train and serve our models at podcast. Hello everyone. Today we're going to demo how we use SageMaker training and multimodal server for ETA predictions at podcast. The training steps we follow are quite standard, except we'll be training multiple models during a single training job. SageMaker puts all the output files in a single tar file and pushes that to S3. In order to then use a multimodal server to serve these models, we will have to repackage this file into separate tar files, one for each of the models. Let's run the training and deployment script. This will create the models using the sklearn library. Repackage them and then deploy the models to SageMaker endpoint using a multimodal server. It will also add auto-scaling to the endpoint in the end. Since this will take a bit of time to finish, let's come back once it's done. OK, so the script has finished running. On S3, we can see that a tar file called model.tar.gz has been generated. Every time we run the training job, a new tar file will be generated and the way we distinguish the different tar files is by following a path pattern, where it specifies the repository shorthand, the environment, the model version, and the training time. For example, this file indicates it's a model trained for our staging environment for version 2.0.27 beta on 7th of March. The tar file was saved under the output folder. If you download this file and extract it, you will find seven different models in it. Like what we mentioned before, because we want to use a multimodal server to serve the models, our script had to extract all the models, we package them into separate tar files, and save them in a different folder called packaged models. Here, you find all the seven models we packaged and ready to be served by the multimodal server. It uses each star file's name to locate the different models. And then on SageMaker, you can find the new endpoint that we have created along with auto-scaling. The current instance count is one, but it could potentially go up to five based on the CPU usage and the number of invocations. Let's try to invoke the endpoint and generate some simple predictions. As you can see here, we invoke two different models and each with two sets of input values. Each set of input values 
contain the corresponding required features for the model, and the output is the corresponding prediction results. Based on this setup, let's see how many predictions we can generate a day using a simple load test. Our load test will simulate a case of generating 100 predictions using 15 parallel process. As we can see here, we launched the load test and the average thread duration is around 18 seconds. So that's 18 seconds for 100 predictions. Since our instance count is 1 right now, this translates to 480,000 predictions a day with a single instance. So we will keep the script running until it triggers auto scaling and come back when the instance count is 2. After 43 iterations, we are now using two instances, and the average thread duration has decreased to 9 seconds, which essentially means we can generate 960,000 predictions a day. With a maximum of 5 instances set in auto scaling, we have the ability to generate more than 2 million predictions a day. Next, let's try to get some insights from the models. We will be taking one vessel on its way to Savannah as an example and see how port congestion affects the estimated time of arrival. In order to do that, we will be keeping all the other features the same except port congestion related features. Here, there are two main features that are collected in real time the number of container ships currently in the port and the number of container ships arriving. We would be comparing these two real-time features with historical median numbers, or, to be more precise, the 75 percentile. The idea is to form a proxy on how congested the port is currently and in near future. We call this the Port Congestion Index. We will be increasing this index from 0 to 3 and see the impact on ETA. This script will basically invoke the ETA model using different port congestion indices and return the corresponding predicted time left. So we can see that if we increase the port congestion index from 0 to 3 while keeping all the other features constant, the predicted time left keeps on increasing, which actually makes sense since the port congestion intuitively delays vessel's arrival. That concludes our demo. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Lin Xiao and Hassan, for sharing your machine learning journey on AWS. Now, please allow me to share more about Amazon SageMaker. We can see SageMaker as an ecosystem consisting of services that we can choose to fit our machine learning model. It has data labeling service, data pre-processing service, feature store, studio for Jupyter Notebooks, and a set of training and inference capabilities. And also, you can connect with your models that you deploy to your edge devices. We will probably need a dedicated session to see all capabilities which SageMaker has. In this session, we will focus on features that we learn from podcast journey and features that may improve our machine learning process. With real-time inference in SageMaker, you can auto-scale your inference endpoint to avoid outage or increased latency, just like what Podcast did. And you can also set up multiple variants on the endpoints that links to different model version for A-B testing. When you have multiple models with cascading that needs to be invoked in sequence, you can use inference pipeline. When you have multiple models with similar invocation frequency, you can save costs by hosting them all in one endpoint, again, just like what Podcast did. Lastly, you can use SageMaker Model Monitor to detect model drift over time when the incoming real input data starts to deviate from the nature of each original training dataset. When dealing with tabular data like Podcast, we may need to do intensive data pre-processing 
For this, AWS just launched SageMaker Data Wrangler. With SageMaker Data Wrangler's data selection tool, you can quickly select data from multiple data sources, such as Amazon Redshift, Amazon Athena, AWS Lake Formation, Amazon S3, and Amazon SageMaker Feature Store from various file formats, such as CSV, Parquet, and database tables. To transform data, Data Wrangler has some pre-configured data transform. For example, you can convert a text field column into a numerical column with a single click. And you can also write custom transform in PySpark, SQL, and Pandas. Once the data is transformed, you can visualize the data in SageMaker Studio. These visualizations allow you to quickly identify inconsistencies in data preparation workflow and diagnose issues before models are deployed into production. Deloitte, for example, has felt the benefit of SageMaker Data Wrangler, which allowed them to meet the needs of clients faster. By using SageMaker Data Wrangler, we hope to have better time to market. All right, what can we do now as next steps? Let's first identify the business problem in our organizations that we may solve using machine learning. Just look at podcasts on how they see inefficiencies in freight shipping across the ocean and came up with the ETA prediction idea. After you validate the idea, then you can consult an AWS solution architect to see how the solution can be architected in AWS. You can then build a proof of concept leveraging AWS free tier. Also, rather than reinventing the wheel, please look at the capabilities in SageMaker and other AWS AI services to speed up the time to market. You join the AWS Summit to learn, and you can keep on learning after the summit with resources from AWS training and certifications. We offer over 65 courses, many available free and on-demand, as well as virtual instructor-led trainings. When you are ready, prepare for the AWS Certified Machine Learning Specialty Exam, which validates your skills. For more information, visit https colon slash slash aws.training slash machine learning and be sure to check out our AWS Ramp Up Guide to learn more. Here we come to the end of our presentation today. We have learned how podcasts improve the efficiency of container shipping across ocean through machine learning and how they run the machine learning process in Amazon SageMaker. I would like to extend my special thanks to Ling Xiao, Gus Sen, and podcast team and I also thank you all for joining this session. I hope the session today is useful and please complete the session survey. Thank you.